Welcome back. China once again igniting fears of World War III by flexing its commie military muscle on the democratic island of Taiwan. The Red Bullies, see what I did there, have reportedly flown 149 sorties inside Taiwan's air defense zone in the past four days, 56 today alone. The U.S. State Department urged China to knock it off, but China's foreign ministry spokesperson just turned around and blamed America and started laughing for their provocative actions and promised to, quote, take necessary countermeasures. Talk about gaslighting. Sheesh. Are we on the brink of war between China and Taiwan, and could it cause another devastating global conflict that nobody wants or needs? Here with me to discuss Cato Institute's director of defense policy studies, Eric Gomez. Eric, how are you, and what do you think about this entire situation? I'm doing well, Kennedy. And, you know, I often say that it's a very mixed bag when my interests or areas of interest are in the news because I usually study very happy things, but mm. it means that people are uh, paying attention to stuff like this. Um, so I'm not very worried about immediate conflict, um, partly because these incursions have been happening uh, for a while. Uh, my friend Gerald Brown, uh, if you go to his Twitter account, he's been tracking the activities of these ADA's incursions since last September. Mm -hmm. And what's Is that most when interesting really about... they started perking up? Yeah. So what's most what's most interesting is that they were steadying, staying steady at a relatively low level. And then in the last few weeks or last few days, it's really gone up suddenly. So I think that's a, a big cause of concern right now is why are they going up so quickly uh, so recently? Mm -hmm. Does it have anything to do with China's real estate problems roiling global markets? Is that a reaction to that? Like, you know, Facebook has a whistleblower on 60 Minutes, and then the next day all of a sudden Facebook isn't working and that's all we talk about? <laughs> I, I mean, I, I, I think that might be a, a part of the explanation here. So I, my own theory on this is that there's a few potential explanations. Number one is operational and training, that China is doing military training exercises and these exercises are starting to go into the ADAs. It's not necessarily an indication of immediate Chinese intent to start a conflict, but rather a, uh, you know, them just doing drills and sort of probing and seeing how the Taiwanese react mm -hmm. to gain some intelligence and data. The other aspect here is, like you mentioned, the economic problems that are in China right now with the Evergrande company, but also right now is a period of uh, sort of intense national sentiment, both in China and in Taiwan. China celebrates the anniversary of the founding of the People's Republic of China on uh, October 1st, and Taiwan celebrates the founding of the Republic of China on October 10th. Mm -hmm. And in that time, you know, if you have these national days so close to one another, I think that's part of the signaling, too, of saying, look, we're China, we're big, we're strong, and then we're going to do it's something like, like Canada this. Canada Day is on July 1st, and in America, Independence Day is July 4th. <laughs> So if, yeah. if you have someone in uh, Bellingham, Washington, uh, screwing around, it's going to be it's going to be then. So how how does this end? Is China going to invade Taiwan? Because the U.S. can't just jump into a hot war with China. That's right. bad for everybody. But if China invades Taiwan, Taiwan's going to fold like the Afghanistan security forces on day three. Right. Well, and I and I hope that. My hope is that the United States can provide some assistance to help Taiwan, where Taiwan can get to the point where it doesn't fold like the Afghan National mm. Security Forces. So what does um, that mean? I, I agree with you that I personally, I am not on board with the idea of the United States and China fighting a war for no. Taiwan. But in Washington right now, this is sort of the, it is the big question in security when it comes to China of how do you handle the Taiwan issue? Because it's a long-standing problem for the U.S. Taiwan or the U.S. China U.S. China Taiwan relationship, mm -hmm. and it's also geographically and operationally one of the hardest things for the United States to try and defend. And I think that Taiwan could have a good chance of having a very strong self-defense capability, uh, but part of that is them getting motivated to do that. And to their credit, they have been increasing investments in their self-defense forces, mm -hmm. which is, I think, a very welcoming sign. Um, but yeah, this is going to be like if, the big question AOC, of the U.S.-China competition. I wonder if AOC will vote present on a Taiwanese Iron Dome and then cry about it. That could happen in the very near future. Eric Gomez, thank you so much.